Welcome back. With more than six months still until the first primary votes are cast in the 2024 election cycle, Axios is reporting that already President Joe Biden is in jeopardy of losing two of them, but it's not perhaps what you think. Biden has been pushing for Democrats to host, host the first primary in South Carolina. That state, of course, helped him secure the Democratic nomination back in 2020. But the proposal has rankled establishment Democrats in New Hampshire and Iowa now. Those two states, of course, are where the first primary votes of the season are usually cast. According to Axios, Iowa and New Hampshire could just hold a primary vote and leave Biden off the ballot, allowing another long shot candidate to win the primaries there. The DNC's Rules and Bylaws Committee is slated to review Iowa's primary plan today. Joining us now, the author of that report, national political correspondent for Axios, Alex Thompson. Alex, uh, great to see you. Um, we've known for a while now that New Hampshire pretty unhappy uh, with the president's plan to have that first primary in South Carolina. The state senators have made their un uh, displeasure known. But Iowa sort of caught me by surprise uh, seeing this report because there hadn't been much talk about Iowa. So where do things stand and are there any talks that could change this? Uh, well, there are really no talks that could probably change the current trajectory unless there is some significant shift. Now, Iowa hasn't been as loud as New Hampshire has been, but quietly they've basically said, we're probably going to hold our caucuses the same day. Now, you said they're going to review at the same day as the Republicans, which will be before New Hampshire. Right. Now, you mentioned the DNC is set to review the plan today. Now, I can tell you pretty confidently that they are not going to approve the current plan because the current plan has them ahead of South Carolina. So essentially, Iowa has submitted a plan that they know will almost certainly not be approved. So what that does is it kicks the can down the road. They're going to review it in another two months. I anticipate they're also going to submit a plan that the DNC is not going to approve. And so DNC is going to strip them of their delegates, right? They're out of compliance with the rules, which is also why Joe Biden is probably not going to be on the ballot, because Joe Biden says, I'm going to abide by the DNC rules. But what this ends up... Uh, the scenario is that you could have someone like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. or some other long shot Democratic primary candidate win those first two contests. And then you have a few weeks of like sort of weird coverage before South Carolina, where we should note Joe Biden is almost certainly going to win. He is almost certainly going to be the nominee, but it might be an unwelcome few news cycles for him. Hmm. So we ask, is there litigation that could come out of this? Like if the states and the DNC going to file lawsuits back and forth. And to be clear, no one's suggesting that President Biden's grip on the nomination is in jeopardy, but but you're right. It could be awkward. It could give life to, you can see Republicans certainly taking these headlines and really trying to create trouble with them. Well, the, the problem is that in terms of litigation, there's probably not going to be, they're both in a staring match, really, at, at each other at this point. You know, the DNC would just prefer this problem to go away. Yeah. And also part of the problem is that New Hampshire has a state law with a Republican governor that requires the New Hampshire primary to go first. So Democrats, you know, it's in their self-interest, but they're basically throwing their hands up and says, there's a state law and there's a Republican governor that is not going to change it. You also have the same problem in Iowa with their own Republican governor, who just signed a law to two weeks ago that is now requiring an in-person caucus on the exact same day as the Republican caucus. So let's talk 2024. Uh, you mentioned Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, we're not going to spend much more time on him right now, but it is, no, it is noteworthy, I guess, in a couple of polls show him at 15, 20 percent, which maybe some analysts think is just a representation of Democrats looking for other options. Like it's not going to be Robert F. Kennedy Jr. per se, uh, but they're, they have some concerns about President Biden. How would you, national party leaders you speak to, like how do they feel about the place that he's in right now for his reelection bid? Where so much energy is spent on the Republicans, rightly, at this moment, because their field is up and going and yelling at each other. Uh, the president is kind of his campaign deliberately, low-key start, raising some money, no official events yet, barely any staff. But do they feel like he's in a pretty good place or do they have some concerns? Uh, they definitely have concerns. I mean, mostly it or is all oriented around one word, age, or 80, one number, because they, you know, President Biden had that fall like the other week over the sandbag. And obviously, I, a lot of Democratic leaders I talk to, they constantly go back and refer to actually the 1996 campaign, which you may remember Bob Dole had this terrible fall near the very end. Now, he was probably going to lose anyway, but you have a lot of Democratic leaders that have that event seared into their memory. And I think the one thing that they constantly talk about is like, we just don't want to have another fall. We don't have another trip. And that includes people inside the administration, too, that just sort of cringe every time he is sort of shuffling along there. That being said, they think he has a very strong record to run on. He also think, they also think that with 
Republicans running further, further to the right on issues like abortion rights. You have DeSantis, you know, hitting Trump on a six-week abortion ban. And there's a reason why uh, Joe Biden is going to be talking about gun rights. You know, this is a gun, uh, or not gun rights, but gun control, gun safety. Uh, this is not technically a campaign event, but it really is. And Harris talking in North Carolina uh, next week on the anniversary of the repeal of Roe v. Wade, that's not a mistake either. That's also technically a campaign event that's not a campaign event. Yeah, you're certainly right about the fears of another fall. Imagine, as one aide put to me recently, what if he had fallen and broken something and spent a couple weeks in a cast or, or, or worse? Um, but you're right. They also look across the aisle and see the Republicans self-immolating, including the leading candidate just having been in federal arraignment. So they feel pretty good about that. National political correspondent for Axios, Alex Thompson, great to see you as always.